we've been asked the question, which is better, tight bond or Gorilla Glue? Now, both glues are popular and both have their own followers. Tight bond is largely used in the woodworking community and, and Gorilla Glue we find used in a whole bunch of different applications. The two glues are really not the same. But as I got into this, I found that, you know, Gorilla, like tight bond, is a brand. And the Gorilla actually has a whole line of different glues, including a wood glue. Now, the classic Gorilla Glue that we thought we were starting off with here is a polyurethane glue, whereas tight bond and Gorilla's wood glue are PVA glues. PVA stands for polyvinyl acetate. So what we're looking at is what's the difference? Now, I've chosen to use um, Type Bond 2. They've got three different versions of the glue, Type Bonds 1, 2, and 3, because it is the closest match to the Gorilla glue, at least their wood glue, okay? Both are somewhat water resistant. So what we're gonna do with these glues is we're gonna do a few different tests. We're just gonna try working with them and see what kind of results we get. Uh, in a number of things that may affect how we as woodworkers use these glues on our project. One of it, my big concerns about these glues is what I call workability. And that's kind of a vague term, but it's essentially how easy are they to work with. Now, I've got to say I've had a lot of bad experience with Gorilla Glue, but that has been things that have been glued together with Gorilla Glue. Nobody bothered to clean out the foam, foaming out, the oozing out that happened with it. It was turned over to me a couple years later to clean up. And that's really hard to do, okay? So what I've done is I've taken three of my sets of my sample blocks and I've glued them together with the three types of glue. So I want to see how well they glued and how well they clean up, all right? One of the things I noticed right off the bat is of the three glues, the Type Bond 2 was the hardest one to keep in alignment when I was gluing it. Now, normally when I'm edge of gluing, I use calls. I didn't use calls. All I did was a single trigger action clamp clamping the pieces on the ends, okay? So when I look at this particular sample, the, the Type On 2, I see that my pieces are out of alignment, let's say on this side by over a sixteenth of an inch. Now this side's pretty well aligned, okay? Compared to the other two, now the Gorilla PVA is, is a little bit out of alignment too, but only about half as much as the Type On. And the polyurethane glue is probably the closest to being in alignment. So. What that tells me is that's the least slippery glue, that's the least lubrication of that joint. That's something that concerns me, it may not concern you, okay? The other thing, of course, is how easily do they clean up? So let's take a look at that. I've got our Type Bond, our Gorilla PVA, and our Gorilla Polyurethane. And, uh, you know, the typical thing to do is to clean them up with a chisel. Now, I'm just going to say right now, that's going to be hard to clean this Type Bond up because it's so far out of alignment. But let's give it a shot anyway. Okay, now this has been about 24 hours since I glued these, uh, and it's cleaning up pretty well. I, the glue still feels a bit on the rubbery side, I'll say that. It would probably clean up a little better if it felt a little harder, a little more brittle. But okay, I'm able to clean it up out of there, and of course I would have to sand this to level it out or plane it. So that's, that's the type bond. Now what about the Gorilla PVA? I did notice gluing these up that the Gorilla is a lower viscosity. In other words, it's runnier. There's pros and cons to that. One is that one of the cons is, or maybe it's a pro, it's hard to say, is that uh, when it came out, it formed more drips because the sample pieces were not sitting level. Now this one is actually easier to clean up. It's a little harder, a little more brittle, uh, or in the dried form than the type bond was. So that, that's a plus for this glue. It's also dries pretty clear by comparison. You know, you can hardly see it there, whereas you can see the, the type bond is being yellow here. That makes it harder to see, but then again, if you're making something that's, say, a little bit rough, and uh, you don't need to worry about cleaning it up so much, okay, it's not going to be so visible. So here's the Gorilla. You can see this side, this was, I think, the, the bottom side. There's a lot of, of ooze out. Of course, we expected that because Gorilla Glue expands a lot. And surprisingly, this cleans up extremely easily. Now, my only experience with cleaning this up before was on stuff, like I said, it had been glued and left sitting a long time before it was turned over to me. So from a workability viewpoint, I'd say the Gorilla is an excellent choice. The easiest one to work with of the three, even though you got all this ooze out. Since we're talking about that ooze out, uh, I thought I'd bring this out. This is a chair, an antique chair my wife recently bought that has clearly been repaired with Gorilla Glue. This is a, the dark brown colored Gorilla Glue. There's a lot of ooze out here. And uh, so 
What I'm going to do is a, a little bit of cleanup on this just to compare how this is to the fresh Gorilla Glue. One of the things that makes this a little more challenging is I'm working on a curved surface here. It's always harder to do something like this on a curved surface. Now you see this, this is much harder to work with. It doesn't cut cleanly. Same chisel. We're only a couple minutes later, so I seriously doubt the chisel is all that dull. Glue is much more rubbery. This is the issue that I have had with Gorilla Glue in the past. And I've got to say, it's really not an issue with the glue as much as it is an issue with the people who have used it. So th this is the challenge that all that ooze out causes for us, is how in the world you get it off of there when somebody didn't do things right. All three of these glues claim to retain their color and not accept stains. So I thought I would check that just to be sure. So what I've done is taken a piece of wood and I put a, a slight one inch hole in here. Didn't go very deep, only about a sixteenth of an inch dip. Filled it with the glue and then I applied stain to it. So this is the tight bond. As you can see, it's kind of yellow. That's the color. This is the Gorilla PVA and it's kind of white. And then here we have the Gorilla polyurethane which is really white okay but none of them accepted the stain that's the important thing and so they do hold up that way in some ways it'd be nice if they did accept stain because you could make it match the wood but the point is is that they do what they say that they're going to do regardless of anything else the purpose of these glues all of them is to hold wood together we want to test that we want to see how well they hold it together now remember in the early part of the video I said that there's tensile strength and there's shear strength. Tensile is the pulling apart and shear is the going across the glue, trying to break the glue, okay? The specs you see on all this stuff is tensile strength. But as I mentioned then, I don't see wood glue joints and wood fail in tensile rather than shear strength. So we want to test that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit each of the pieces and just see at what point they fail. Now, theoretically, what should fail is the wood and not the glue joint, okay? This is pine. It's not real hard. And, and the glue is supposed to be stronger than the wood. So what we want to do is see at what point do each of these glues fail or glue joints fail. And then we want to see what failed about it. And that's what we're going to look at. So I've got the Gorilla Polyurethane. I've got Type Bond. And I've got the Gorilla PVA. Okay. And uh, I'm starting out with a, a little jeweler's hammer. It's a very lightweight hammer. Didn't do a whole lot, right? Here's my tack hammer. Yeah, that didn't do anything either. This is a... A double ball peen, George Hammer, a little bit heavier. Okay, this is the 16 ounce ball peen. And now before going to the sledgehammer, I'm going to take this from a little higher up, about a foot above the wood. Now I'm going to the three pound sledge. Well, the polyurethane failed. The tight bond held. And so did the Gorilla wood glue. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit higher with both of these. And so did the Gorilla. Okay, so let's look at what our failures are. Here is the Gorilla glue, and clearly it's the wood that failed, okay? This is the second time I ran this test. I ran it the first time off camera. In that test, which is actually this side of the same blocks of wood, uh, it was the glue that failed. But this time, the wood itself actually broke. Our tight bond here is still partially together, but again, it's very clear that the wood broke because I can see the glue line and at this end, it's about 3 16ths of an inch. And at this end, it's about 16th of an inch from where the actual break is. So that's clear. And then the Gorilla also, here's the glue line all the way down here. And it broke up here. And so in all three cases, the glue itself was stronger than the wood. Going back to what I said about the Gorilla polyurethane, the first time I ran this test, most of the joint, the glue failed, a little bit of the joint, the wood failed, okay? However, for both of the PVA glues, it was clearly the wood that failed. All of them have the strength to do what we need, and that's really the issue. All these other things are interesting, but when a push comes to shove, what we really care about is that the adhesive that we use holds things together. All three of these glues can apparently do that if they're used properly, and that's a key, okay? And part of that key is that we have a very minimal gap between the pieces of wood. The bigger the gap, the more likely the glue is to fail because these are not gap filling glues. And when I'm talking about bigger the gap, I'm talking about anything that has to do with warpage or that has to do with sawtooth marks in the wood. OK, that's why wood is jointed before it is edge glued. OK, now you can if you've got a good enough table saw with a good enough fence, you can joint wood clean enough on your table saw that you can edge glue it. I've done it many times. If you don't have a good enough table saw, you either need to get a joiner or you need to join it by hand with a plane and preferably a joiner plane, the longer plane. But if you join it properly, you've got a minimal gap 
and we're talking six thousandths of an inch, which is smaller than a hair thickness, the glues will do the job. All three of these glues will do the job and they'll hold it together. One of the claims that Gorilla Glue makes is that it can cure with only 30 minutes of clamp time. Now, as a guy that's always used PVA, that seems a little incredulous to me. So I thought I'd test it out. Now I'll compare it to PVA. Now, nobody is saying or advertising, I should say, that PVA will cure in 30 minutes of clamp time, but I have seen literature saying that it only needs 30 minutes of clamp time. So what does that really mean? So we're gonna find out. I've got two sets of blocks here, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply the glue to them according to manufacturer's recommendations. Now in the case of the PVA, I'm only applying it to one surface. I know there's woodworkers that apply it both surfaces, but I tend to do one surface unless I'm gluing end grain. Besides the fact for this particular test, applying it to one surface maybe gives it a little more of an advantage, okay? Maybe levels the playing field a little bit because the, the Gorilla is only applied to one surface. What we're gonna do is we're gonna glue these up and we're gonna give them exactly 30 minutes to cure. So there's our PVA sample. And as per instructions, I'm gonna go ahead and dampen one surface for the polyurethane. And I'm gonna put it on the other surface, spread it out just like I did the PVA, clamp this one together. Now, I wanna give them exactly 30 minutes to cure, so I'm gonna use the timer on my phone to do that, and the time is counting as of now. Okay, it has been right at 30 minutes since I glued these pieces up, so now we're ready to see how they did. Obviously, we got the ooze out on the polyurethane glue. I'm not gonna bother with the the full array of hammers here. I'm gonna intentionally break them because we wanna see, is the glue actually cured? That's the only thing we're really looking for. And as I believe I mentioned before, I'm only doing the polyurethane glue and the tight bond PVA. The tight bond seems to be the stronger of the two. So, are we ready? Let's bust these apart and see what it looks like. Looking at the PVA, this is definitely dry. No question about it, it has cured. It looks quite clearly, I can see glue on both surfaces in all the same spots, so it looks quite clearly like it is the glue that broke and not the wood fibers. On the other hand, at the tight bond, this is still tacky. It's not tacky enough that I could probably glue it back together and expect it to work, but you do not have that 30 minute cure time with the PVA. So if you're looking for a fast cure time, the polyurethane definitely beats it out. How strong it'll be, that's the, another issue. But if you want that fast cure time, PVA is a really good option. Maybe not as good an option as cyanoacrylate CA adhesives, but CA adhesives are very weak under shear. So that's something to consider. 